So the HBO documentary, The Scheme, aired on Tuesday night. And this was the documentary involving Christian Dawkins, that entire backstory there, which, of course, centered around cheating in college basketball, pay for play, all that stuff, bribery, a lot of really scandalous sounding words that uh, make for a really good trailer or description of a movie. And, of course, Will Wade's wiretapped phone call uh, aired in that documentary. To, to not bury the lead, Scott Woodward today did release a statement. It's two lines. I'll read it to you. Quote, We are aware of the documentary first aired on March 31st, 2020 on HBO. There is no change to Coach Will Wade's employment status at LSU, and we will continue to cooperate with all reviews into this matter. That's the entirety of the statement. So I sat there and watched it. Uh, did you? Let me know your feedback. I'm sitting there, and I think my exact tweet immediately after watching it was, watched the scheme, and now I'll go on living my life. Uh, my feelings about Will Wade, LSU, this entire situation that I had yesterday, are the same feelings that I still have today. Uh, as I have said for a year now, when the first rumblings of this surfaced, I am not absolving Will Wade or LSU of wrongdoing. There is, however, evidence to support both sides of this debate, of this argument. And... That's basically what happened last night as well. Um, if you didn't watch the, the documentary, I will do my best to summarize what happened while also giving my feedback for those that, that did watch it. Essentially, it's a two-hour documentary, and the only people interviewed on camera for the documentary were Christian Dawkins, the runner aspiring agent who is at the center of this, his attorney, Dawkins' attorney, Dan Wetzel, who's going to be with us in about 25 minutes of Yahoo. And there was a Wall Street Journal reporter as well who was the first to kind of uncover that, that this was being uh, researched. Um, one thing I learned about Christian Dawkins, guys got a checkered past. Uh, good family, had you know, experienced tragedy in their family. He had a younger brother who was a, apparently a dynamic young basketball player at 14 years old, died on a basketball floor. Had, an, had a, an unknown heart abnormality, and it killed him at 14. Uh, it was obviously devastating for the family then and continues to be. But Christian Dawkins, as a kid in junior high, was running a scouting service. His dad was a, was a coach, and so he knew a lot of players, so he had an online scouting and ranking service, and he was charging coaches $600 to subscribe, college coaches, $600 to subscribe to, to his service. God bless him. Entrepreneurial, go get it, man. Go get your money. Uh, he also listed himself in his scouting directory and listed himself at six foot two, albeit he's only 5'10". So right there, you got a little bit of an inkling that maybe Christian Dawkins isn't always on the up and up. Um, he also was working for Andy Miller, an agent. And when he ceased working there, a credit card associated with Miller's agency, was tied to Christian Dawkins' Uber account, which he continued to use to the tune of $42,000. Bruh, you could try to lie to me and say like, oh man, I forgot it was there after a couple of rides. But when 42 Gs isn't showing up on your expense report, that's going to be a little bit of a red flag there. Come on, man. Uh, and then, of course, he's at the center of this scheme to pay players. His whole thing was he had cultivated relationships, Christian Dawkins, with players through his AAU teams and all, and, and that scouting world that he had built. And so he had, he had cultivated the relationships with the players, with their families, and he was an aspiring agent so he could go get the players to sign with his agency. That was the whole thing. And the way that game is played is you funnel those families' money and then they sign with you on the back end. As he said in the, the documentary, wouldn't you make a $50,000 investment for a $5 million payoff? That That's the whole idea behind it. So... The FBI starts to investigate because they, they view coaches as public employees, as public officials. And if you're bribing 
public officials, well, that's bribery and that's a felony. And so that's what they were investigating. So the FBI sends this guy, Jeff D'Angelo, who's an FBI agent, undercover as an investor into Dawkins' agency where or, or his scheme as the guy who's going to pay for these kids, provide the benefits to the kids, their families, and ultimately in the back end, the idea is pay off. But we don't know it. He didn't know it at the time. It was an FBI agent. Um, if there's something that did not appear in this documentary that's disappointing and needs to be understood, it's that you only got one side of the argument. You only got Christian Dawkins' side. You got Dawkins and his attorney. The Those that might provide the other side of the story, the FBI, the NCAA, LSU, Arizona, Louisville, prosecutors, none of them participated. So the film was Christian Dawkins' defense of himself. So of course it's going to be slanted that way. But the thing that as far as the legality in my mind, that exonerates Will Wade. Again, legality. I'm not talking about NCAA if anything happened there in Dono. Legality. The most amazing part of this documentary is the FBI has wiretapped phone conversations. Dawkins does not know he's being recorded. And he is trying to convince this FBI agent, who he thinks is an investor... He's trying to tell him, no, you don't pay coaches. That's not how this works. And the FBI undercover agent keeps saying, I want to pay coaches. I want to pay coaches. It's basically entrapment. They were trying to get the guy to commit a crime that he didn't want to commit. I mean, that's, and that's on the federal wiretap. So these guys are listening. The FBI is listening to Christian Dawkins on phone calls, explaining to his friends why they're stupid because it's not how this works. And yet they they proceed. There was even a, a part of the documentary where they're in Las Vegas and the, all the, the college coaches are there and prospects are there. And and the, the FBI agent who's undercover, Jeff D'Angelo, who's the, the investor, keeps telling Christian he wants to see coaches. And so Christian Dawkins gets on the phone with Book Richardson and with Tony Bland. And he's like, hey, man. Could you just humor this moron and come up to the suite and meet this guy because he wants to meet coaches? He's going to put money on the table. Don't touch it. I'll take the money. He's even saying, like, don't touch the money. All right, I got it. I'll keep you clean. Like, Dawkins was trying to keep the coaches clean. He was trying to keep, keep them out of it. And yet they proceeded with all of this stuff, which seems so mindless. I, I mean, so from a legality standpoint, it is impractical to think that Christian Dawkins gave Will Wade money. That's impractical for himself or for players. Like, that cl was clear to me through all of this that that did not happen. What is clear is that the FBI spent millions of dollars to catch a very small fish in a giant sea. That trip to Vegas, Christian Dawkins said they spent about $100,000 of the money that the FBI, unknowingly, I thought it was his investor, was was giving him for, for coaches, and they just went and gambled and... Went to clubs, bottle service. So your tax dollars and mine went to fund a really cool party in Las Vegas. Oh my God, so stupid. That That is probably the biggest takeaway, is that the FBI invested millions of dollars over three years into an investigation that turned up peanuts, relative peanuts. Now, as it relates to college basketball, and the other thing, the other thing, the undercover FBI agent, Jeff D'Angelo, is also now being investigated because apparently he was misappropriating funds. The money the FBI gave him to you know, fund the scheme, he was pocketing some of it or using it for, uh, for whatever activities in Las Vegas. The FBI agent was even stealing the money. But here's what we know. So back to Will Wade in this part of it, okay? Here's what we know. What we know is that Will Wade is on a federal wiretap talking about the strong-ass offer, and we, we know that at this point. We, we had read it before. Now we got to hear it, okay? Um, what we know is Will Wade met with LSU officials. Joe Oliva said Wade answered every question satisfactorily. He was allowed to keep his job. 
with NCAA officials as well. Javante Smart, after being you know, withheld against Vanderbilt, he and his family met with NCAA officials and LSU compliance. He was allowed to continue playing and played this entire season. Nas Reed, we also got to hear the tape conversation between Dawkins and Sean Miller talking about Nas Reed. We know Nas Reed had no dealings with Sean Miller. Those two men speculating about what happened. Nas Reed on the record last year at the NBA Combine said, there was no deal. It didn't happen. So you have people on the record saying there was no deal. You have coaches and players that met with compliance and NCAA officials and investigators, and they're continuing to coach and play. What am I to believe? As I've said all along, there is circumstantial evidence on both sides of this case that if you want to make a case for it, you can. But ultimately, what do we have that's concrete? And the answer continues to be nothing. So Scott Woodward has no choice but to say, we're aware of the documentary. There's no change to Will Wade's employment status at LSU and we'll continue to cooperate with all the reviews into this matter. If you were expecting in the documentary the scheme for some bombshell to drop this new evidence, that didn't happen. All we really learned is that the FBI wasted a tremendous amount of time and resources for something that seems massively stupid. 